Hello students! In this video I'll be showing you how to georeference an image and take an image such as one that you might find on the web or a JPEG that you downloaded or maybe something that you scanned and get it into ArcGIS Pro and move it into the correct space in the right place on a map. This process is called georeferencing and it really just involves an image that does not know where it belongs in the real world and some type of base map or reference layer so you can put it into the right place. If you want some more information on this, there's a really great uh, georeferencing section in the ArcGIS help. So you can just look up georeferencing. There's an overview, a little bit, little bit about the tools and the process as well. The way it starts is you need that image. So you need to get that image, figure out where it should be on a map, and then go into ArcGIS find that place on the map and fit your image to the display. So at least it's in the same window so you can see the, the image and the real location side by side. You use what's called the georeferencing toolbar, create some control points, and then in the end, you can save it out. So those are the basic steps. So let's get started. I'm gonna go back to the web. So I started out with this image right here. It was actually a PDF. So I took, the, took what I needed and I just saved it as a PNG. Once it was a PNG, go to a blank map in ArcGIS. And I know that eventually I'm going to want to do this in a UTM. So I could go to my properties. I could change it to UTM. And I know that my image is supposed to be for um, State Forest, State Park. So I can just zoom right into that area on the map. Now what I'm going to do is add in my image. The image does not have coordinates. It does not have real world coordinates. It does not know where it should be on the map. If I went and actually tried to zoom to layer, it would be nowhere, It'd be in the middle of the ocean somewhere. I'm gonna go back. So what I need to do is figure out where that map is. I know the map is somewhere around here. So I can kind of zoom into the area roughly where it is. I know it should be around here. I'm going to close my catalog just to give myself more room. And the best thing to do is find out where it should be and then kind of move over, pan over, and then you can highlight your image in the contents, go to the imagery tab, and then from there hit the georeference button. Now it opens in a whole new ribbon of tools. And this is where we're going to do our work. So what I want to do first is fit to display right up here. And all that does is put the image somewhere in my visual display, but I know that it should be over here. So now at least I can see them in the same window side by side. Then you have to orient yourself and figure out, okay, well, what in the image belongs where on the map? And for this, you might have to play around with the correct base map. I'm going to change my base map to OpenStreetMap because it has the park boundary on it. So the park boundary is a really great way to say, hey, this little corner, this little nook right up here is actually this little nook down here. So you can create what's called a control point or many control points where you say this point on my image should go over here in the real world. And you keep doing that multiple times and it'll move into the correct space. So back to my georeference tab. The way you make those control points is with this add control points button. But before I start, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna turn off auto apply Auto apply means it'll automatically do the shift as soon as I click a control point, which means that my map will cover up the base map. The image will cover up the base map and then I won't be able to see. So I don't want that. I'm also gonna just add a transparency. Click on my layer, go to appearance. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a transparency um, so that I can see underneath it if I have to. Back to georeference. Uh, now I think I'm ready. So I've oriented myself. I fit my image to the display. I can see them side by side. I'm going to hit add control points. And now I'm going to do this as many times as I can 
evenly distributed throughout the map. I don't want to do all my control points in just one corner or one little section of the map. I want them to be pretty evenly all over. So I'm going to zoom in just by scrolling. And I know that this corner on the, on the image, see how it says from? Now it says to. I clicked on the from. Now I have to tell it where I want that point to go to. I'm going to pan over by hitting C on my keyboard. Now I get my pan tool. I can also scroll out with my scroll wheel and then pan. And then it might be a little bit easier. Pan again. You can't really see them both in the same thing. But I, I know that I clicked on this one. So I'm going to zoom in and try to be as exact as I can and click right there. So now I've made a control point that says that that little corner on the, on the image is going to go to this little corner in the real world. Now I just do that maybe 10 more times. So find another spot that is easy to pick out, like right here. There's a good little uh, distinguishable nook right in here. So I'm going to zoom in over here, make a control point here. I'm going to click on the from, zoom back out. Zoom over here and click on that. If you have some type of boundary, that would be really good. If you have noticeable spots in a road, like a, a sharp turn in a road or an intersection or um, natural features that are really easy to pick out, those are the ones that you want to go for. Um, so I'm going by the boundary. If you don't have a boundary, get creative. So let's take a look over here. We have the point where the trail meets the lake at Agnes Lake. So I can use that as my from. Zoom back out. You can find that lake right here. And I'm using the OpenStreetMap base map. And so when I zoom in, I do see those trails. And I can find where the lake meets the trail right here. Let's do a couple more. Um, we want to make sure that they're evenly distributed, so we want to make sure we get a couple over here. So let's try one maybe near the top of Chambers Lake. All right, so I've now made a total of six different points scattered throughout the map. Again, you don't want them all in one place because then it has to do too much guessing. The further you get away from a known point, it's going to have to kind of guess and it's not going to be as accurate. Uh, I, If I had more time, I would add maybe a few more just uh, for good measure. But once you have your control points and you're happy with them, you can click the control point table. And you can actually look at the coordinates, the from and the to, the source and the map coordinates for each uh, control point and you can also look at what's called the residual so you can see what the error is and that's a measure of how far away it actually is or how accurate it actually is so you can play around in here if you see any that are really really high uh, you can remove them and maybe try them again maybe you clicked in the wrong spot I'm going to close that for now if you're happy with it and you're confident that you clicked in the correct spot then you can hit apply and notice what happens Ooh, now the map is in the right place. So I'm going to get out of this uh, add control points mode. I'm going to go back to map, I'm going to go to explore and pan up. So now I can see the map is in the right place according to the points I added. Because I have a transparency, I can also see through it a little bit and I can see how good of a job I did. So you, I can see already it's not perfect up here. Uh, it's pretty good over here by that point. The closer you are to a point, the better it will be. Um, here I must have messed up this control point because this one's way off. Um, so I might want to delete that one and redo it. But the other ones seem to be okay. So now, assuming I did a good enough job, um, I can save this out. And I can do that from the GeoReference toolbar. And I can do a save. 
or save as new. Save will modify the original and add this new coordinate information to your original image. I don't recommend doing that only because if you did mess up and didn't realize it, then it's a pain to fix. I recommend doing save as new. And then you just give it a name, uh, state park, geo referenced two, because I already did it. Uh, and then you can change any other uh, things that you want in here. Uh, make sure you check this because you might not want it to be 8-bit depending on what you're doing. I'm going to make it 16-bit and then I'm going to hit export. So I've already done it and I'll just show you the completed one here. So this is my completed one and this image now is a TIFF. It is actually in my catalog right here. So this TIFF it has the real world coordinates embedded in it. So now I can just add this to a map and I won't have to georeference it again because I've already done it and I've saved it. So if I had a brand new map, or I can just add this one in on top of it, it will just go in the right place. And that's the whole point of georeferencing. Once you have it georeferenced, you may want to play around with transparency, and under appearance, you may want to play around with brightness and contrast. So if you did want to see through it, you could. And then you could maybe digitize features off of it or just have this information in the right place. And that's all there is to it. If you need to know more, I do think that this overview of georeferencing and these um, help topics right here are a great place to look. Good luck.